As my chapel deadline approached, I grew more and more worried about what I would talk about. I always had a few ideas floating in the back of my mind, but nothing very solid. Then, one day, I sat typing on my computer, trying to figure an out an idea. Anything would do at this point. Suddenly, I heard the light sound of paw prints and a jingle of a collar. I looked down to be greeted by a dog, wagging his tail with a, uh, with a clenched up tennis ball clenched in his teeth. Suddenly, I knew. Hi. As most of you probably know, my name is Sophia, and today I'm going to tell you about lessons I've learned from my dogs. Growing up, I've always loved animals, and as a child, my dream job was to be a veterinarian. Although my dreams have gone elsewhere, my love for animals have never really faltered. My dogs Nigel and Skye were the first real responsibilities I've ever had. They're loyal, compassionate, and really, really, really energetic. They are, of course, extremely unique. Today, I will share with you the most valuable lessons I've learned. Number one, be different. This is something that my dogs are extremely good at. While both my dogs are compassionate, Nigel would rather lay on a comfy corner of the couch while Skye will take the first opportunity she gets to jump up onto your lap and start licking your face. Skye doesn't like to play fetch. Well, for Nigel, that's pretty much the only game he will play. These differences are what makes these dogs able to stand each other. They both know their places and who they are, and if they were to become too similar, they could butt heads, and then they wouldn't be able to get along. In a way, this is a thing a lot of people need to work on. You should never do something because it's cool. You should do it because you want to. You should be who you are. My dogs show that every day. If one of them doesn't want to go outside, they won't, no matter how much the other one pushes them. During the summer, my parents received an email from Mrs. Blair. I never knew what it really said, but my understanding soon became that the field hockey team was in need of players. I was quick to say no. This would be my third year playing soccer at Montgomery and my 10th year ever playing soccer. Besides, most of my friends played soccer. After the continuous pestering from my dad, I soon began to think of the idea of field hockey. I had become slightly tired of soccer after all. I have been playing for nine years already. With a lot of hesitation, I soon said yes, ignoring the fact that I was leaving behind my soccer friends and a sport I had grown up playing. Now, although I miss playing soccer and I miss spending the fall season with my soccer friends, I wouldn't change my decision. I learned a sport that otherwise I would have never played, and I also became better friends with the other players on the team. When I started to write this chapel, I realized just how, how much Nigel and Skye have actually taught me. They've taught me simple things that have shaped me to who I am by just being themselves. If you are only to take one thing away from the chapel today, take this. Be you. My dogs have taught me so much from just being themselves. You never know. Maybe you'll teach someone something by just being you. Number two, give love to get love. Every day when my dad comes home from work, he is greeted by the excited yipping of my dogs. They greet him as if this was the first time they had seen him in years. He greets them with pats and belly rubs before moving on further into the house. My dad always jokes that those crazy, rambunctious dogs love him more than we do. He always knows those dogs will be there to greet him, even when others, like my brothers and I, won't be. This has slowly turned into a routine part of my dad's day. These dogs make my dad feel welcome, and in return, he shows, he shows his affection. He doesn't even go out of his way to make the dogs excited. Instead, he just spends a few more seconds giving them his attention. We can do this too, and the best part is we don't have to go out of our way to make someone's day. Then, the next time you're feeling down or in need of help, you know, that, you know that people will be more willing to lend a hand because they know that you'll help them out. Number three, forgive and forget. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally stepped on my dogs over the years. They're small dogs who follow you almost everywhere, so stepping on them is pretty much inevitable. When an event like this occurs, my dogs will whimper and move away, yet less than two minutes later, they'll be back pretending like nothing ever happened. I've always wondered how they could do that. Is it because of some kind of memory loss? Maybe, but very unlikely considering some dogs are smarter than some people in the human population. Dogs look up to humans. It's why they're man's best friends. I like to think they know that you've made a mistake and they can forgive you because they can see the best in you. 
Always look for the best in others, because for some, it's hard to see. But for those who are able to see, know that everyone is unique in their own way, but we all make your mistakes. Next time your friend makes a mistake, think that you might not want be, to be able to forgive. Think of this. First, think really hard. Did this person do something forgivable? Most likely, yes. What's the worst thing a middle schooler at our age can do? Then, as long as they're sorry, accept their apology, no matter how hard it may be to accept their apology. There is no reason to ruin a friendship over some silly little problem that you probably won't remember in a few years. Finally, forget about it. Nothing happened. You can no longer hold a grudge with that person for that specific, specific reason. It may be hard, but if a dog can do it, why can't you? Number four. Take a risk. No matter the outcome, you'll learn a valuable lesson. One summer day, a few years ago, mo my mom and I were, my brother's mom and I were down in our basement on a rainy day. It was a usual Wednesday routine when our cleaning people would be upstairs dusting and vacuuming, doing the chores that my mom gave up on trying to make, make us do after so many years. Suddenly, we heard a knock on the top of the door at the stairs. My mom went up to see who it was. Later on, I had learned that one of the women had discovered what she thought was a puppy. Let me just say now, it was no puppy, and instead, a dead rat. Nigel had decided to dig into his Scottish roots and hunt for rodents in the yard. Quick fun fact about Cairn Terriers. They were bred to be hunters. They lived in the Scottish Highlands and hunted for rodents in small piles of rocks called cairns. Luckily, that was the last rodent ever successfully brought into our house. That day, both my f family and Nigel learned valuable lessons. We learned to check Nigel's mouth before he entered the house. And Nigel, he learned that it probably wasn't the best idea to bring dead rats into the house. Two summers ago, I went to a three-week non-traditional sleepaway camp in Massachusetts called Explo. It was my first time away from home for more than a week. To say I was nervous was an understatement, but my nerves were slightly calmed by the fact that I would have a friend to accompany me. The first days of camp were the worst. I was exhausted from the long days and hungry from the food being nothing what I was used to. I ended up crying a couple times the first day too. I soon began to regret my choice of coming to this camp. Then, one day, in the video production class I was taking, I met this girl. She was a year younger than me and having the time of her life at camp. From her, I soon forgot what I was missing from home and soon had one of the best summers ever. At the end of camp, I cried once more, but this time it was due to the fact of not wanting to return to my normal life. This past summer, I returned once more, this time without my friend. I met a ton of people from all around the world and that I still keep in touch with today. During these summers, I became more independent and less reliant on my parents. I grew up and learned how to do simple things, like waking myself in, up in the morning. Without these experiences, we wouldn't have learned these small, but nonetheless important lessons. Experiences are what shapes our future. They're what allow us to grow and mature into who we were meant to be. Number five, wag more, bark less. I was driving with my mom somewhere when she pointed out a bumper sticker with the words, wag more, bark less, and a paw print. It was a simple sticker, but it got me thinking. Why is it that I always focus on the negative? Why is it that what everyone seems to focus on is the negative? Things we don't like about each other, quirks, imperfections, things we can't change about others. We let it consume us, and before you know it, that person's image is ruined in your eyes, and you never even got to know them. Meanwhile, our pets have decided that they don't care how the other dog looks or acts. I have a challenge for all of you today. Today, focus on only the positive, no negative. See how different your day can be. Dogs and animals in general can teach us so much without us even knowing it. John Grogan, author of Marley and Me, Life and Love with the World's Worst Dog, once wrote, a person can learn a lot from a dog, especially a loopy one like ours. Marley taught me about living each day with, un with an unbridled exuberance and joy, about seizing moments and following your heart. He taught me to appreciate the simple things in life, a walk in the woods, a fresh snowfall, a nap, shaft in, a nap in the shaft of winter sunlight. And as he grew old and achy, he taught me a about optimism in the face of adversity. And above all, uh, he taught me about friendship and selflessness and above all else, unwavering loyalty. Now, before I go, please enjoy this video about what others have learned from their dog. Thank you and enjoy your day.